to start. <laughs> okay, well, Martin, excellent work, like I said. And um, it, it's really interesting, but how did the project get started? How did it, it get started? Um, uh, I'm European. I've been traveling a lot, and, and then somehow I found out that I didn't know so much about Europe, you know. I mean, I've been to most of the countries in Europe before, and then all of a sudden we had, like, after Lehman Brothers, you know, 2007, we had, like, uh, those crises, those financial crises in Europe, you know, and, 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 and then it got, became very political, you know. And, and for me, uh, all of a sudden I realized, you know, that Europe is something completely different, you know. People, they started to believe that Europe is more like European Union, you know. And when you look at the map, you know, then you see that Europe is something completely else, you know. Europe is much, much, much bigger. When you talk to people in Russia somewhere, you know, like on the, on the, on the left side of the Ural Mountain, you know, then they believe to be uh, Europeans, you know. It's very normal. I mean, first of all, Russians, you know, like people in, in, in Naples, in, in Italy, they believe I'm, I'm uh, Napolitano, you know, yeah. and then there are Italians and then there are Europeans, you know, but the Russians, they're also Europeans, you know, and we don't see that so much, you know, and this made me very cu uh, curious and, and, and I just wanted to see more about that and then I found out that it's very difficult to find any kind of work about Europe, you know, and then I thought now I want to see it and I want to show it and um, uh, so I've decided to do something. First, I didn't know what to do, you know, for a couple of years, and then I developed an idea. And you're a photographer. You've been a photographer. Yep. So you chose to go out and, and make photos. Yeah. But of course, you, you talk to people, and how did you choose who, who you're going to photograph to tell the story? Well, I mean, once I have decided, you know, that I want to portrait people, People, you know, first I thought I will do more like reportage style of pictures and so. But once it was very clear that I want to portray people in a very, very simple uh, way, you know, with a white backdrop, you know, then it was very clear that I want to show real people, you know. And so the question was, where can I find the real people? You know, <laughs> basically you find them where they work, in their families, on the streets, and so on and so on. You know, so for me it, it, it was so very clear from the very beginning that I have had to find those people where they are, where they live, you know, and to get them out of what they're actually just doing right now. So uh, we had like two different methods, you know. The first was like um, I saw someone, you know, and then I was basically telling my assistant to build up the studio and then uh, because we we're working with large format cameras so it, it's a little bit complicated, you know, so within a minute or two we built up the studio and then um, uh, I got the person, asked him to take pictures and then we did the pictures. And the other method was like that I was more like thinking, oh, what kind of pictures would I like to take, you know? For instance, you know, when we have like harvest time in France, you know, where they go to the vineyards, you know, then I went also there, you know, because I want to show this kind of the, of the, of, of, of the tradition, tradition in, in France, you know, um, with all the wine and so on, you know? So we went there and there, you know, like um, uh, when in the evening after the work was done, you know, came back, um, uh, <clears throat> to the to the to the winery, you know, like um, I built up my studio, and then I was asking people coming back from the vineyards, you know, if they would have a minute. Yeah. To share. Now, now yeah. I understand better how you chose these people because that was for me amazing. You know, I see so a big variety of people, and you know, if you go to the Bahnhofstrasse, which yeah. is mentioned, or Europa, you know, it's not where these people are. So I realized we actually made a strategy. You say like I want to have this. I want to have this type of person and this type of person, yep. based on like you know what kind of what kind of work you want to have photographed, maybe what kind of generations yeah. you want to have photographed, and then you look for spots where they actually show up. Look, when you when you travel to 48 countries, when you travel to over 250 regions, you know, then you start thinking about what you want to do there, you know. And it's very clear that in Iceland you have different kind of expectations, you have different kind of pictures in your head than, than from France and Paris, for instance, or, or when you go to the UK, you know. And, and, and um, so, of course, I could have said, well, I'm just driving to um, England and <laughs> when I see someone I will just photograph it. But for me it was more interesting, you know, to go to um, sometimes special places, you know, like the, the, when you go to Warft in, in Danzig, you know, there's a history behind, you know. Yeah. It's a, it was a very important um, uh, moment for you, Europe's history, you know, in Danzig what happened, you know, with Solidarność and so on, you know, 
basically by the end the, the, the end of the Cold War, you know, it, it has somehow started there. there. It has somehow started oh, yeah. there, you know, yeah. Okay. And so uh, there's also a historical aspect, you know, or for instance in the UK, I mean, I don't know if you have been to England, you know, but in England um, uh, it is very interesting, you know, when you go to a, to a soccer game, then you see those fans, you know, they're very different than they are in Switzerland, you know, and on the other hand, when you go to Royal Ascot, you know, that's the horse race for the Queen, you know, I mean, I went there with a friend of mine, you know, he was assisting me, you know, and then um, the dress code for men for the royal enclosure was 55 p pages long, you know, 55 what? page, 54 pages of dress code, you know, because I mean, they're all the details, you know, I don't care so much about clothing, you know, so, uh, <laughs> and, and, so, and so, you managed to get in? Well, we all, that's my job, you know, I'm a photographer, I always had to go to places and to photograph people, so I don't know, but I just went there, you know, and um, I tried to organize things, how that's my daily. How do you convince these people to um, actually agree to be photographed? I ask them, and I'm very surprised myself, because um, uh, we have, now we have uh, 1,247 portraits, you know, and um, of course there are days, you know, when things are going very smooth and some other days it's not going so smooth. That's very normal, you know, in, every, in every, everyone's life. But by the end of the day, usually when I ask people somewhere, for instance, I ask 20 people in a day, 90% in average, 90% in average, they say yes. I was very surprised by that. And what was even more surprising, you know, sometimes I really wanted to have someone, you know. Most of the time, you know, I would like to have someone, you know. But sometimes, you know, I was very, very, very sure. It doesn't happen so often, you know. But only two in the whole period, for the whole project, only two people that were not um, uh, uh, too convinced, you know, to pose for the camera, you know. Out of those, I mean, I was photographing hundreds of days. I don't know precisely how many days I was on the road, you know, but the project that was for many years, you know, I was driving like 112,000 kilometers, you know. So that's more than 80,000 <laughs> miles. calculated? Did you kept note of the kilometers? Yeah, of course, I mean, I had to. And also. the locations. Also. And the locations, and I have like a journal. A journal is, I don't know, it's 500,000 pages. I mean, there are big, big folders, you know. How and long has this project been going on? I mean, I started basically in my head, you know, 2011, 2012, you know, I knew that I was, that I wanted to do something about Europe. I mean, of course, I always wanted to do something about Europe, you know, but then it became very clear that it will start something about Europe, you know. And then I had like for about two, two and a half years, I was like doing more a test project, you know, so I was trying to find my uh, own picture language, you know, how I should show that, how I should um, show Europe, you know, and then um, I was not very convinced, maybe that's also why it took so long, you know, and then one night I just woke up and it was crystal clear that I want to show people very in a very simple way, black and white, that I want to show them as human beings, very natural, very um, uh, unstaged, of course it's staged, you know, but it should <laughs> look very natural, you know. And uh, you're getting them on the way home from work, you were saying. Precisely, yeah. Just whatever they are doing during a day, you know. And basically, I didn't want to give them like a platform for their vanity. I just want to show them the way they are, you know. Yeah, it is surprising that everyone agreed to do it because I was surprised. <laughs> Not everyone, but most, most people, over over ninety percent. That's so surprising, yeah. But maybe, do you think it's? Uh, I'm curious. Do you think it's because? You were going to places that maybe not so many people are curious about, like you were saying. Uh, maybe a lot of people are going to the Pampelona to shoot the running yep. of the bulls. Yep. <laughs> you go to these other places, and maybe they were happy to tell their story. No, I, I was like in any places. I was a few times in Moscow, a few times in Paris, for just as examples, you know. And I was like in most remote areas in, in whole Europe, you know. It didn't make a difference, you know. But what I found out is um, that. When it's about art, and this was very surprising to me, that's somehow interesting, you know, what, what is art? We don't know precisely what art is, it means, you know, but, an art but all of a sudden it's something completely different, you know, it's not, it's not about, um, and, and also they were very willing, basically when I tell them, no, 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 don't post, just come here, they were very, very willing. Uh, to do that, you know, when I do my normal professional job, you know, like if I do a corporate uh, portrait or if you take the portrait of a politician and so on, they always want to show something, yeah. a certain thing, yeah. and that's precisely what they didn't want to have, you know, yeah. they shouldn't show something, I just want to see them, you know, the way they are. Is there a political message in your pictures? Well, I mean, for, for me, the political message is relatively simple, you know. I mean, uh, people make the country, you know. You could also say, like, tonight, you know, people make the party, you know. And some people, you know, they want to they wanna put something like, like a, a layer on top of that and, and, and say, well, we have this and that. By the end of the day, people, they make, the, they, they make a country. It's the culture. 
you know, they create the culture, you know, or they lift the culture. Do you have a different picture of Europe now? You Completely. already mentioned it's much bigger, but is there anything else? Um, it's a good question. I mean, we could, I could write a book about this, 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 this question. So it's very, very difficult for me just to, to, to make a short answer on that. Um, uh, I'm very surprised how diverse Europe is. You know, I mean, we just had like this small discussion before. You know, about Germany. You know, like I mean, there's a very different culture. You know, the way people behave, the way people think, in in in, in Berlin or in Hamburg or in Munich. You know. That's or when you look, you experience as an American, right? Yeah, the, I mean that was what struck me most. Yeah, and uh, this project is really interesting in that sense because, yeah, I mean if if the people that make up the countries and they're so different, but everyone's existing in the European Union, yep. then do you think that? Well, for instance, politically, uh, Brexit is one example, where you hear the, the, the demise of the European Union now. Yeah. So when you started, it was quite strong, and then now you're finished, and yeah. it's, too, it's wary. But do you think the people everywhere you go yep. are more interested in being a Napolitano, an Italian, or yeah. a European? Look, borders may change, people won't change, you know. That's so simple, you know. How, how did you get involved with the project? How did you find out? Well, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Martin. <laughs> we actually okay. met in the 90s already. Okay. And there was a time when you didn't have digital cameras. It was still film. And you didn't have a lot of shots. Yeah. And uh, we, we, we went on a motorboat, and that's where we met. And we went water skiing. And Martin <laughs> made a picture. He, he just made three or four pictures of me, but one picture was unbelievable. I know I wasn't even holding the rope anymore. I had my hands on the side. The ski was completely out of the water. <laughs> and I don't know how this is possible. Yeah. And you know, Martin managed to get that on film. Yeah. It's really yeah. that really, you know, amazing. Yeah, it was my early twenties, you know. At the time I was a sport photographer also, <laughs> yeah. so oh, really? like, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, I was also but that was just that an incredible sense, photo. So, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and later, you know, I kept of course I kept touch and he was our wedding photographer, even though that's not something he does, but, you know, I backed him to do it for us. And again, we, we, we had really, we had wedding photos that you not, you not recognize as wedding photos. Yeah. You think they are a piece of art. Yeah. They're actually as simple as, you know, it's a little bit, you know, in that black and white style, he also shot a couple of photos, really yeah. unique, where I don't even recognize myself on the photo. You know, like, this is a different person getting married, yeah. because they look so timeless. Yeah. It's a timeless photo. So we stayed in touch, and then uh, Martin, you know, made our pictures for the office for ten years at least. You know, he did all the pictures for my office, and then he comes up with his, you know, face of Europe. And um, I actually had difficulties first digesting it, but I thought, like, you know, I really believe in Martin. I want to, I want to have a look at it. I want to at least have two or three, you know. And then he brought his maybe 150 or 200 photos out of the 1,200 he did. Yeah. And I was like, okay, 200 photos. Fortunately, he took the lead and he said like, which one are good and bad, and we started to put them on the table. And then something changed in me. Suddenly, these people were not strange anymore. They were not, you know, before I had kind of a resistance, suddenly they became friends. And I got really excited. I can still remember. I was like, oh, we take these two, and then we take these three together. And then, you know what, I, these 18, they have to be in one picture. Or 10, I think it was 36 or something. Yeah. I put in one picture. And, uh, and when I saw everything together, suddenly I was like, I really want to have this in my office. So this is, this is how I got involved. That's where we stand right yeah. now. And is there something about the medium of film that you still choose to, is, is it to capture this timelessness? Well, why, why did you end, end up deciding on black and white film, large format film? Yeah. I mean, uh, first of all, it is not film. It's, it's on digital, but it's a, it's a handmade uh, field camera, you know, an Alpha Swiss made camera. It's a handmade lens from Germany. It's really all state of the art. And it's mid format, it's just the largest sensor you possibly can get in digital. It's the phase one, 100 megapixel sensor for people, you know. <laughs> this that's, is really heavy so, camera I had. No, it's very simple. No, 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 it's, it's, it's not, not heavy. Yeah, I mean, the camera would be the same. The back is okay. different, and okay. uh, no, it's, it's this very back, but in a different camera, you know, which is relatively light. But um, uh, the quality is like the most outstanding. And it is the thing what is coming closest to a normal analog photography, you know, like on film, yeah. as we did before. 
and um, uh, the quality is just much higher. When you look at the, at the large picture over there, I mean, you hardly have ever seen a portrait in this technical quality. Just talking about the technical quality, you, know, you don't see, even if it's, uh, if it's uh, two meters high, you know, you don't see any grain or pixels or whatsoever. You know, you just see the person and you feel somehow the person, you know. It's not over sharp, but you can also do that by Photoshop, you know, it's not. Um, black and white is very simple also, because it's simplifying, reduced to the max, and the max means the personality, you know. The, the human should tell a, a, a person a, a story, you know. The human should tell a, a, a story, because um, when you look in someone's eyes, you know, or when someone is sitting over there, something is happening. Maybe you don't know what's happening, you know. Maybe when you look at the people, you don't know what's happening. That's maybe even true, you know. But that's interesting, you know, because it makes you think. That's what is so fascinating to me, you know, working with so many different people. I have been photographing thousands, thousands of people in my life, but when you do always do it in the very same way, you know, like in this case, you know, in front of a white backdrop, you know, and then it's becoming very, very pure, you know, and with black and white, you're reducing even more, you know, and of course, I mean, you could say those are two examples, you know, like with the tattoos, the lady, the, the singer, and that, uh, the massage therapist I, I took in, in Ireland, you know, um, uh, they have those huge tattoos that they must have a certain uh, way to express themselves, you know, but um, uh, still, when you look in their eyes, then you can feel a certain personality. Yeah. And I find that in every single portrait, you know. And it's interesting actually, like, when we're looking at the 12, when, when we would look at the 1247 portraits, you know, in 90% in the cases, something is happening, something interesting is there, I find, in 90% of the portraits. And Herman, how, how did you end up deciding? <laughs> it's a really good question. Yeah. That's, that was really tough. There's so many pictures. And I still remember when, uh, when I had this, you know, maybe 50 or 60 pictures and I had to reduce it to 36 for the big, the big one. Yeah. And I left it days on my, on, my, on my actually dinner table, you know, in our dining room. And we couldn't eat there. We had to eat in the kitchen. <laughs> and I always look up, went back. And, and then there was one day when I went there and I chose. And it all flew, and it was finished within ten, five minutes. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Yeah, I can, unbelievable. I can imagine. You know, that's. Yeah. You just have to you have to let it sit. It takes some time to digest. Yeah, yeah digest, yeah. and then you know, suddenly you have to look at the picture, and you you don't really have any criteria in your head. There's nothing because you know, should you pick the one that looks better? No, yeah. you don't want to look pick the one that looks better. You want the one that has more to say. Yeah, yeah. But how can you tell yeah. which one has more? But that's to precisely the same process. <laughs> process I went through by selecting the people I'm photographing. You know, because yeah. it's also I don't know <laughs> why. Only, I, I choose you say people, like you know? these just two guys. Are, like them they're just yeah. unique. Yeah. You know, because there are other people with tattoo. <laughs> yeah. That that I did actually. You know, I decided I want to have different styles. So you know, I, yeah. I chose now two people with tattoos, and maybe there's another one that I chose, but not too many of the same stuff. But I wanted to have diversity. I wanted to show like the breadth, you know, the width, the, the width from the farmer from the Swiss mountain all the way to the fisher in the Mediterranean. And that's also a little bit what's, uh, what, what's all about in the project. You know, I mean, we were earlier discussing, you know, like um, uh, how did you choose the the, the 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 people, or how did you select the places? You know, I was or I wanted always to to show the whole Europe. Even by knowing it's not possible, you know, but it's very, very clear you need farmers and you need intellectuals and you need uh, factory workers and so on and so on, you know. So um, there is, of course, a certain kind of strategy behind, you know, but as I said, you know, sometimes it was very clear and some others, I just see someone, you know, and maybe my favorite pictures, you know, I mean, they just happened, you know. They didn't have any t anything to do uh, with this strategy, you know. I just saw them and I found that incredible, you know. And that's, I mean, by the end of the day, I think that's the interesting thing about human beings, you know. Like, I mean, when you look in, in a crowd of, I don't know, 100 or 500 people, I mean, those are all human beings, you know. Maybe they, they come from the same village, maybe not, you know. But they're so diverse, you know. The way they think, the way they look, the way they behave, it's, it's what kind of values they have, even if they're in the same culture, you know. And that's Europe would not be Europe without that. Yeah, but I mean, I've been traveling also in, 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 in all the other continents, you know. For instance, when you go to Africa, you know, you have more like the tribal cultures. There is also a huge cultural difference, difference, you know, from one to another tribe, you know. Sometimes it's not such a big uh, 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 difference. 
um, uh, from tribe to tribe, but sometimes it's huge. Like even within the Maasai, you know, I spent a lot of time with the Maasai. I did like the, the Moran school, uh, to become a Maasai, uh, 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 Maasai warrior. So I was attending this school for many months, you know. And um, within the Maasai, I didn't know that. <laughs> within the Maasai, I didn't know that. I mean, well, I'm, th th I didn't have, have I, to be honest, I, I, didn't, I didn't have... I didn't have time to have a look at. There's just one single picture in the in one of the portfolios, okay. but um, I didn't have time to choose them. I've taken more pictures than I have time to look at. Yeah. You know? So, anyhow, and but but like when you look at those tribes, you know, there are sub tribes, you know, and they have sometimes a very different culture, very different values, and so on. You know, so I find in this sense Europe not so unique. You know, um, in Asia for me it's a bit more difficult because I don't speak the language, and for me it's I've been traveling quite often to Asia to pretty much all parts in Asia, apart from the very, very northern part, you know, so, but um, uh, um, uh, I see a lot of culture, cultural differences, but more like from the way people look like, you know, and they, they express themselves, you know, but le less in the way they feel and so, because for me it's just more difficult to, to get close to the Asian people, you know, in Africa it's easier for me, whatever. And what do you? <coughs> yeah. What do you? What do you hope to do with the photos now that they're in your office? Why? Why in this place of work? And are there any that you're taking home? <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm probably gonna keep them together. Yeah. I like them in the office because we have online businesses, and these are actually our customers. They could be our customers, and I think it's good to have them visible so that we know who we're responsible for. I like this idea. So this is going to stay here in the office. I hope that um, we may actually make other exhibitions together, Martin. You know, maybe we can use them. You know, we can reuse them for, for different exhibitions. Sure. Right now, I'm I'm already in love. It's the first time today that I've saw them all hang up. You know, it's for me new too, and I'm really excited. <laughs> really excited to keep them here. Yeah. Well, very impressive. Are Thank there... you. Are there any uh, other questions I should ask? No, I think that was, that was really, that was really I think it's, it's pretty good, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, for, okay. thanks for sharing, Martin. Really, well, thank really you very much, you know, that, uh, <laughs> <for> that you're <laughs> interested in those pictures. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to have your perspective as well. Yeah.